All right, guys, continuing on with our test review. Number 15, three equal values of impedance are connected to a Y to a 2, 8, 3 phase supply. Each impedance value has a value of 12 ohms and a power factor of 95% lagging. Determine the phase current, the line current, and the total power in kilowatts. So these guys right here aren't necessarily resistors. Uh, they're some form of impedance. So we're not sure what these actual loads are, but they have 12 ohms of impedance. And be careful right here when I give you the power factor value. So let's start off and we'll find our, uh, we've been given our line voltage of 208 volts. And this is a Y, so we know that for the Y, um, we have two rules here. So where are we going to put those guys? Over here for the Y, we know that I line is equal to I phase. And we know that V line is equal to V phase times root 3. Okay, so for those guys, uh, we can see that the phase voltage is less than the line voltage by a factor of root 3. And we've already memorized the fact that when we have 208 volts on the line voltage, we know that the voltage on the phase is 120 volts. No need to go through that one more time. So now we can find our phase current. All right, so with this guy for our first answer there, we're going to find our phase current by taking 120 volts that we just found on the phase, we're going to divide by our 12 ohms, and obviously that guy is gonna give us 10 amps on the phase. Okay, for B, nice simple question there. We know that I line is equal to I phase and a Y, so that's also equal to 10 amps on the line. So we have 10 amps here on the phase and we've got 10 amps here on the line. Nice, so we can put that value right here, right? We've got 10 amps on the line. Now last answer we need to find is the total power in kilowatts. So whenever I, I've given you the power factor here, we need to find the VA and then multiply the, the We've got to figure out the VA and then figure out how that power factor goes in to find our kilowatts. So remember that in the background, if you're stuck and I give you a power factor value, we know that power factor is equal to watts over VA, right? Or kilowatts over KVA. So once we find our VA value, we can multiply by our power factor and that will give us our total wattage. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is find our VA total. And that is V line times I line times root 3. Our line voltage here is 208 volts on the line. We're going to multiply that by 10 amps, which we have on the line, and multiply those guys by root 3 to give us our VA. So we've got 208 times 10 times the square root of 3, that gives us 3602.67. Right on. Now our power factor is 95%, right? So our total wattage is going to be equal to our VA, our 3602.67 VA. We're going to multiply that by our power factor of 95%. And that is going to give us our wattage. So we need to do, let's see, uh, 3602.67 times 0.95. So I've already got that in there here. So when we hit equals, that value is going to be 3422.54. Excellent. So total power in kilowatts is 3422. 0.54 watts uh, and then if we we're going to round that up uh, we would because it's asking for in kilowatts that would be 3.42 kilowatts for our final answer for C okay that didn't take too much time let's take on 16 now a Y connected induction motor delivers 100 horsepower when operating on 600 volts three phase line at 90% power factor lagging that's a lot of information so what do we need from there? We need from that the fact that it is a Y-connected induction motor. Uh, it has 600 volts, 
and the power factor is 90%. Forget all the other noise. The motor draws a line current of 92 amps. And we want to find the voltage reading of each phase winding of the motor uh, and the kilowatt per phase used by the motor. Be careful right here. I'm asking per phase. So don't get tripped up there. Okay, so let's transfer those guys over here. Uh, so we've been given the fact that this guy is a Y-connected uh, three-phase motor. It has uh, it says 100 horsepower, but that's really uh, of no consequence to us. Um, it has a 600 volt line voltage. So this value right here is a line voltage. Uh, and the power factor is 90%. Okay, the current that the motor is drawing is 92 amps. And we want to find the voltage rating of each of the phase windings of the motor. Okay, well, it's a Y wound motor. So let's start off by redrawing that circuit. We have a Y wound motor. So we have each of our windings here coming together at a star point. Uh, and the voltage that's being impressed across this guy is 600 volts. So let's see. We've got 600 volts on the line. And it is a Y, so we know that for the Y, we have two rules. We have I line is equal to I phase. And we know that V line is equal to V phase times root 3. Or if we reconfigure that, then we'll have V phase is equal to V line divided by root 3. So the voltage reading per phase winding of the motor, well, we have 600 volts on the line. Right? So our phase voltage here for A is going to be equal to 600 volts on the line divided by root 3. And that gives us a phase voltage if we round up to 347 volts. Beauty. So this voltage right here is 347 volts on the phase. This voltage right here is 347, and any line to neutral voltage here is 347 volts as well. Okay, then we need to new, you find the kilowatts per phase used by the motor. Now be careful, don't get tripped up on, on this guy, right? So this was our A answer here. Uh, and now we're going to find the answer for B. Let's see if we can have enough room here to find our B. So we're looking for this value per phase. I'm most likely not going to do that to you on the test. That's a little bit tricky. So what we need to do is find the VA on the phase, which is just our single phase value, right? So we have 347 volts on the phase. Uh, and what do we have? We have a Y wound motor, right? So we have <clears throat> 92 amps on the line, which means that we have 92 amps on the phase. And so we'll do the 347. I don't have enough room here. Let me bring this down here. So 347 volts on the phase. We just found that our phase current is 92 amps because it's a Y connected motor. And that gives us, let's see, 347 times 92. That gives us 31,924. Now that's in VA, and we're looking for the kilowatts. And we, uh, we made sure to keep in mind that I gave you a power factor there. So again, we know that a uh, power factor is equal to watts over VA. So if we're looking for the wattage, then we'll be able to find the wattage by taking our power factor and multiplying by our VA. Cramp for space here. So we got 31,924 VA. We're going to multiply that by our power factor. Our power factor is 90%. And so let's see what it gives us for our wattage. So we've got 31,924. 
We're going to multiply that by 90%. That gives us 28,731.6. Excellent. Okay, we're asked for the kilowatts, so we're going to move this decimal place over 1, 2, 3. It'll be 28.732 kilowatts. Excellent. All right, guys, that's pretty good for 15 and 16. Let's move over to uh, number 17. Okay, number 17, we've got six 44 ohm resistors. Uh, they're connected so that three resistors form a delta connection and three resistors form a Y connection. Two banks of resistors are then connected in parallel to a 440 volt three phase supply. So this voltage right here is 440 volts on our line. Uh, and we're looking for the current in each of the Y connected resistors in the delta connected resistors and then the total line current. Okay, so let's start off with the delta for, uh, no, let's start off with the Y connected first. Okay, so for A, we're looking for the Y resistors. Okay, if we redraw that diagram there, we have a Y with each of these guys being equal at 44 ohms and we are impressing a voltage of 440 volts on the line again not sure where I got this question from I don't like that uh, non-standard voltage but we'll roll with it for now so we got 440 volts on the line we're looking for the current on each of the phase resistors so we now need to find our line to neutral voltage so we know that our phase voltage here is going to be equal to our V line divided by root 3. For us, that's going to be 440 volts on the line divided by root 3. Let's see what that gives us. So 440 divided by the square root of 3, that gives us 254 for our phase voltage. Okay, so this voltage that's across each of those resistors is 254 volts. And that's our phase value. Okay, we can now answer the value for the current in, through each of the Y-connected resistors. We now have an Ohm's Law equation here where we have 254 volts impressed across 44 ohms. Okay, so we got 254 divided by 44. Come on. And that gives us 5.77 amps on the phase. Okay, keeping track of those values, uh, we know that this current now on the inside is 5.77 amps on the phase. And because it's a Y, we know that the phase and the line are identical. So we know that the Y connected resistors are pulling 5.77 amps on the line. Okay, let's take a look at the delta connected resistors. Okay, again, we're just gonna redraw that circuit. We're feeding that with 440 volts on the line. We know that uh, on a delta that the phase voltage is identical. So we know that uh, for one, we know that these are 44 ohms. And now we know that the voltage here is 440 volts on the phase. And now our Ohm's law equation here for the current through those resistors is 440 volts on the phase. We have 44 ohms, and obviously our current here is going to be 
10 amps. Okay, so here we've got uh, 10 amps on the phase. Now we need to find our total line current. So the next step here for C is we know that the Y connected resistors are pulling 5.77 amps on the line. And we're gonna add the delta connected cir circuit, but we don't know what the line current there is yet. So we're going to, where are we gonna put that? Uh, let's just put it here for the I line for the delta is going to be equal to uh, 10 amps times root 3 and that's obviously going to be so we got 10 times the square root of 3 and that gives us 17.32 so that current is 17.32 amps on the line okay so that value where we're going to put that we'll put it right here 17.32 amps on the line now because these guys are resistors they're going to be in phase and so we can simply add the 5.77 amps and the 17.32 amps and that will give us our total line current okay so we got 5.77 plus our 17.32 giving us a total current of 23.09 amps on the line okay so we'll finally put that up here 23.09 amps total and again, that means that the current on each of these lines here is going to be 23.09 amps. 23.09 amps and 23.09 amps. Everything will be balanced on those three line conductors because our loads are connected as well in a balanced load with 44 ohms. All right, guys, that's pretty good. Let's stop there. Uh, next video, we'll start again at question 18.